Okay, my last video I gave you an introduction to computational complexity. We talked about how computational complexity is a way to express the running time of an algorithm. And specifically what we're interested in is what's the running time of the algorithm going to look like as our sample size becomes very large. We talked about this as being a way to decide whether or not a particular algorithm is going to be useful to you. If you're going to be processing a lot of data and the algorithm takes a lot of time to run with a lot of data, then this algorithm may not be the most efficient way to implement the task that you're trying to do. Similarly, we can use computational complexity for comparing algorithms to algorithms that do the same task. One may actually perform better than the other, especially as the sample size grows. What I'm going to talk about in this video are the general rules for computing computational complexity. Or perhaps we could say that I'm going to give you an algorithm for computation, computing computational complexity. Okay, the first rule is um, pertains to straight line code. Straight line code is code without function calls. Um, these are not dependent on the size of the input. They're things like um, assignment to a particular variable, accessing an individual item from a list and assigning that to a variable. These would be constant time operations. I'm not going to be able to draw this very well. These would be constant time operations. Order 1 denotes constant time. Um, similarly, arithmetic expressions like this, um, a times b plus 4 and assigning that to a variable performs in constant time. It has no um, dependency upon the size of the input. They're simply operations that we're performing that run in the same amount of time no matter how large the sample size is. Um, input or output of a single variable, and note that the use of single, vari single value here is order 1. So if, if x is 4, the value 4 print x is uh, constant time operation. However, if x was a list, then print x would not be constant time. Why not? Because printing x, if it is, happens to be a list, the time that it takes to print x, if it's a list, is going to be dependent upon the sample size. It's going to take a lot longer to print a list of size 10,000 than it is to print a list of size 10. Okay, rule number two pertains to consecutive sections of code, where we run one bit of code, maybe a loop or something like that, followed by another piece of code. Um, so the first piece of code runs in some time complexity, the second piece of code runs in some other time complexity. We say that the whole segment is the maximum complexity of f at n and g at n, so whichever one is the maximum. We're taking basically what I talked about before, taking the dominant term of the two. So for example, if we have a section of code with running time order n, so let's say that this is order n squared, sorry, n squared, so f at n is order n squared, and we follow that by code that runs in order n time. Then we're going to take the maximum of the two, which is going to be the order n squared. And we're going to say that this algorithm runs in order n squared time. So we're taking the dominant term. So an example of this, we have this function a fun, we have our sample size n, which is the length of the list that we're passing in. What we're doing in the first part of the code is we have a loop that is doing some constant time operations, but we're doing them n times. So we're going around this loop n times. So we're doing some constant operations n times. This is order n code. So we're doing something n times. It does depend on the sample size. The amount of time that this loop is going to take to run is dependent on the sample size because if I have a trillion items, this loop is going to sit and run through all those trillion, I, trillion, 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 I can't say that word, items. Whereas if I have um, only 10 items, this loop is only going to run 10 times, which obviously is going to take a lot less time. So this code is order n. Um, and then this is followed by some order 1 operations, so or constant time operations. So we're just doing some arithmetic, we're doing some assigning to variables, and we're printing, oops, a little problem there. We're printing x and y, which is simply just printing two values. Um, that's constant time operations as well. So we have two pieces of code, one that runs in order n time, one that runs in order 1 time. The complexity of this function is the maximum of the order n complexity and the order 1 complexity, which is order n. So we take the maximum value of the two. So we would say that this function runs in order n 
time. So it's a linear function. Okay, rule number three pertains to if statements. So we have an if statement, we have perhaps several elif statements in here, we have an else statement. Um, each of these conditions runs some lines of code, and what we do with if statements is we look at the amount of time that it takes to run each section of code. We evaluate each section of code separately. So we evaluate the if condition code, we evaluate the else condition code, and then we take the maximum of the different um, pieces of code. So an example here, we have an if statement and an else statement, so we're going to evaluate what happens in this code, we're going to evaluate what happens in this code, and we're going to take the maximum of the two. So what happens in this code? If a list at zero is less than a list at one, so if that condition happens to be true, then we're going to run this code. So for i in range zero to n, n is our sample size, so n is how many items were, were um, we're processing in this function, so we're going to do this n times, and we're simply going to print um, i, which is going to be the iterator, on the screen. So this is order n time code in the if statement. For the else, else statement, what, what are we doing? Well, we're running through n items. We're, we have a loop, which is running through n items. Then within that loop, we have a nested loop. And in this nested loop, we're running through each of these items n times. So for every item in our list, we're running through every item in the list again, and we're doing something that's order one. So we're just printing i times j, the two indexes. We're just printing those on the screen. Um, but we're doing an iteration through the entire list, and for every single one of those items in the list, we're iterating through the list again. This is order n squared time complexity. Okay, we're going to come back to that um, in one of the rules um, that I'm going to go through a little bit later in this video. So we have two complexities, two time complexities, order n and order n squared. We take the maximum of the two, the dominant term, um, which is the order n squared, and we say that this function, the time complexity, is order n squared. So it's a quadratic um, equation that we're looking at. Rule number four, simple loops. Now we've already actually talked about simple loops. The complexity of a loop is the complexity of the loop body times the number of iterations. So what do we want to do? We want to look at what the complexity of the loop body is. So here we have a loop while i is greater than 0. We're starting with i is equal to 2, and we're, oh, sorry, i is equal to 2 times the list. And we are um, decrementing i by 1 each time. So what's the complexity of this code? We're saying that, and I'm just giving you this, I don't have the code written here, but we're saying that within this loop we have code that is order n squared. So Every time through this loop, we're running code that is order n squared. So how many times do we go around the loop? We go around the loop 2n times. Where did I get that from? Well, we're starting with i is equal to 2 times the number of items that we have. We're decrementing by 1, and we're going to keep going until i is equal to 0. And when i is equal to 0, we're going to stop. So we're going around this loop 2n times. The complexity of the body is order n squared. Now I know that just because I have it in a comment here. I don't actually have any code in here, but we're going to assume that the complexity of the body is order n squared code right there. So the complexity of the whole loop then is the 2n, the number of times that we go through the loop, so the number of iterations through the loop is 2n, and the complexity of the loop body is order n squared, making this order n cubed code. Okay, so what do we do? We times the two n's to get n cubed, and we drop the coefficient. We don't care about the two because the two is constant no matter how many items I have in my list. So another loop example. So if I have for i in range 0 to 10, and we have order n code that we're running in this loop, what's the complexity of this code? How many times is the loop executed? The loop is executed 10 times. The loop is executed 
10 times no matter how many items I have in my list. So in fact, this is constant time. Even though I have a loop, the loop is executed 10 times no matter what the size of my list is. The complexity of the body is order n, and that's indicated here just in my comment. Okay? Again, note I haven't put any code in there. I'm just saying that whatever is in this loop is order n code. So the complexity of the body of the code is order n. So the complexity of our whole loop then is 10 times order n. We drop the constant coefficient and this loop actually executes in order n time. So even though it's a loop, we don't necessarily always multiply by n just as a matter of, uh, of interest here. So repeating a constant number of times doesn't change the complexity. So this loop has absolutely nothing to do with the size of my list. It's always going to execute 10 times. Okay, this example is a little bit trickier. So we have n as our sample size and we have a loop. Well, n is greater than 1, so n starts out being equal to the sample size. And within the loop, what are we doing to n? We're dividing by 2 each time. So every time through, n is going to be divided by 2. So if we have 1,000, start with 1,000 items. Next time through the loop, n is equal to 500. Then n is equal to 250 then n is equal to 125 and so on until we reach 1. So each time we're, we're dividing n in half. So how many times are we going to run through this while loop? How many times is this while loop going to run? Well how many times can we divide n by 2 until we get down to 1? If you remember your math from um, high school you can divide n by 2 log n times in order to reach 1. So the number of times through this loop is actually equal to log n. So the time complexity of this loop, given that we're simply doing um, constant time operations within the loop, the complexity of running this code is actually order log n which is a very efficient algorithm. Okay, this next example. Again, if you want to try to figure it out yourself, uh, pause the video here and try to figure it out before I give you the answer. So we have a couple of different things going on in this code. I usually, when I'm trying to figure these out, as I usually go right down to the, the um, smallest elements first. So first I have an if-else statement here. Remember with if-else statements, we calculate the complexity of each of the pieces of code within the if-else statements, and we take the maximum of the two. Well, it turns out that both of these if-else statements, they both run in order n time. Or, I'm sorry, order, or order one time, so constant time. Then I have a nested loop. So I have two loops within each other. So within this loop, What's the time complexity of running this loop? We have um, the time comple complexity of the body of the code runs in order one time. How many times are we going through this loop? We're going through this loop um, the length of the list. So we're going through every single element, which is going to be dependent upon the element size. So this inner loop is order n time complexity. And we have an outer loop, which is also going through the list element by element, so this outer loop here whoops, is also order n time complexity. Sorry, the return is not in the loop, so that would end there. So since this is a nested loop, we multiply the outer loop time complexity by the inner loop time complexity, which is order n times order n, which is order n squared time complexity. 